everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and I wanted to get this done last night because all the news started coming in about Florida and Georgia and woo, but I didn't quite make it. So, I kind of pooped out last night. So here we go, let's take it today, and I'm kind of glad I waited because I do have a few more things to add in. So, here we go. We're going to start out with our lovely POTUS here. He had this tweet this morning, You mean they are just now finding votes in Florida and Georgia, but the election was on Tuesday? Let's blame the Russians and demand an immediate apology from President Putin. <laughs> you gotta love this guy. He is like the master troll. He says the things that all of us are thinking. <laughs> And I know some of you may not be happy with the way he trashes some people from time to time, but when you find out what those people have done, you may feel like doing that yourself, really. He knows what they have done. So, anyway, we're going to find out a little bit about some of the voter fraud and kind of a little bit about how the elections work a little bit more. So, let's start out with this particular podcast. Now, I found this last night. And I listened to it this morning. It is really excellent. You need to listen to this because this guy goes through and he talks about not only what the Dems do, but how they're gaming the system. I mean, they go through and they find ways to game the system. And one of the things they do, if you remember a while back, Obama had this expression. I mean, this is like, I think this article right here is from 2014. And again, all the links will be down below, just like usual. And remember that as I'm researching, I'll put the links that I find on my Patreon account. So even if you aren't a patron, which I'd be happy if you are, but if you don't want to be a patron, if you don't have the finances, that's okay because I'm putting out information there that you can go see. I can't put everything into my videos, so that's kind of the place where I put things that I just don't have enough to put into a video, or they're just interesting things that I came across as I went through. Like there was a plane crash where the autopilot set it to crash into the ground because it was set to altitude zero. Hmm, what's up with that? I don't know, but I thought it was interesting, so I put it in there. So there's lots of articles, and even if you're not a patron, you can access them. If you don't have a Patreon account, you can still see almost all of them. So join me there, because that's going to be kind of my repository for my research. Anyway, let's look at what Obama had to say here. I don't know if you recall this from 2014, but Obama was doing a speech to his voter base, and he said, It's not enough just for you to vote, Obama told backers Sunday in Maryland. You've got to get your family to vote. You've got to get your friends to vote. You've got to get your co-workers to vote. And then... You've got to get that cousin Pookie sitting at home on the couch. He's watching football right now instead of being here at the rally. You've got to talk to him and let him know it is not that hard to exercise the franchise that previous generations fought so hard to obtain. Now, when this came out, I remember there were conservative outlets that were like, did he really just say that? Isn't that really insulting to the Democrat base? Yeah, it was. It still is, because this Cousin Pookie concept was voters who are too stupid to know what to do or how to vote. And I know some of you are not Q fans. That's okay. It's no big deal. One way or the other, we're still on the same side. But I do find some very interesting things on the 8chan boards. And this is one of them that I found. This is a post by an Anon who was talking about that very podcast. So I wanted to put this in here because he gives a good overview of it in case you don't have an hour and 17 minutes to spend listening to it. Although I still think you should sometime try to fit it in. So, he starts out and he says, Cousin Pookie, which we just talked about, I'm still listening to this podcast, which is an interview with a guy named Logan Churchwell. It's getting into the details of how all the close races seem to flip to Democrat after the election. Pretty fascinating stuff. The gist of it is, Dems have boots on the ground of people, lawyers, who are familiar with each state's detailed methods of counting votes. They specifically target elections which are, or could become, close enough to mandate recounts under that state's laws. Have you ever wondered why it always seems to be certain states? Well, I think that's because those particular states have an automatic recount law, and that's why it usually happens. They use the recount opportunity to call some votes into question, but target it in a way that enfranchises Democrats and disenfranchises Republicans. 
legally they use Obama's cousin Pookie argument which is that the Democrat electorate is too stupid to know how to vote and needs help at every step whether that means registering, voting early, bringing the right identification, requesting provisional ballots, understanding the ballot itself, understanding the voting machine, etc., etc. There is a difference in strategic thinking where a Republican who could not vote for some reason would just stay home and say to himself, oh well, but a Democrat who could not vote will get a knock on the door from a friendly volunteer asking what help they need. The upshot is, the Democrats understand and take advantage of the technicalities of the voting process better than Republicans. No doubt there is outright forgery and foolery happening too, but the specific point of this podcast is how, even within the law, Democrats are able to game the system in their favor. And then, again, if you don't like Q, that's fine, but I think this is why Q was pushing so hard to get out there in mass numbers, because most of these shenanigans would not be possible except in very close elections. It is the recount trigger that enables most of the foolery to take place, because I think they set them up. This whole midterm election was a big baited trap for them, because they knew the Democrats would do what they've been doing for years, and that was cheat. And they had it set up this time. But we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Hang on to that idea. I wanted to show you this article first. This is from Vox. You're not going to see me post a lot of Vox articles, but this one I think is worth the read. Why it takes so long to get election night results. Now most of us probably think, well, you know, they have the voting. They just report the results when the polls close, right? No, it's more complicated than that because there's a lot more to it. There are several aspects they have to do. Here are some of the things that they do. First of all, on election day, they have to wait for the polls to close before they can tally any results. Okay, they're not allowed to do that ahead of time. Even though We'll talk about somebody in just a minute who did that, actually, and released the results half an hour beforehand, but that's for later. The votes cast on Election Day aren't tabulated until the polls close. This doesn't always happen on time, either, as people are allowed to cast a ballot as long as they're in line at the polling station by closing time. Okay, so that's something you have to know. Also, number two, after the polls close, make sure there aren't extra ballots or missing ballots. Now, I don't know what it's like in your state, but when I went in to vote in Indiana, we have a voter ID law. Yay! See, Hoosiers are smart. So we go in, we take our government ID, and we hand it to them, and they put it in a little scanner, and it comes up with our information. They ask us if the information is still valid. We say yes, and then they print out a little slip of paper and hand it to us. The little slip of paper had my name on it, and so I took it over to the person who was in charge of the voting machines, and I handed it to them. Then they took it, and when there was a voting machine open, they took me over, and they used that slip of paper to calibrate that machine for me. So it was all set up with my information and connecting my name to that vote. So if I would want to go and check it, I probably could to make sure the results came in as they were, but obviously I'm not going to worry about that because the election came out just the way I wanted it to, so it's okay. I'm sure my vote was counted the way it was supposed to be. We really don't have a lot of problems in Indiana with that aspect of it because we do have a very good system in place and we do not have George Soros machines. I even asked the lady when she set up the machine for me, I said, this isn't a George Soros machine, is it? She looked at me kind of strange. She goes, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure she knew what I was talking about. But anyway, I don't know. I don't believe they are. But hey, I could be wrong on that. But anyway, when the polls close, they have to balance out those little slips of paper or whatever you have at your polling station. They have to balance out who voted and how many votes they have. And if those tallies match, they're okay. But if they don't match, ooh, they've got problems and they've got to figure out why. It's kind of like reconciling your bank statement. And then they have to deliver the votes. When they deliver the votes, they can do it by phone or by a modem, which does not connect to the internet, or by hand. So they have to deliver the votes to the central location. This is part of the problem that we're going to see is happening in Florida because of this aspect right here and what happened with the votes. Then we go on 
and they have to count provisional ballots and other ballots still trickling in. A provisional ballot is, for instance, if I went to my polling station and I forgot my driver's license, then I could fill out a provisional ballot, which allows me to vote, and then I would have so many days, whatever the law says, to bring my ID in to show them that that really was me so my ballot would count. And there's several other reasons why you might have to do a provisional ballot, but for the most part that you know, like maybe you moved and it wasn't registered or you're in the wrong voting district or something, that could be too. And they just have to validate that you really are the person registered, that you are eligible to vote. And in my state, with a state ID, it works out very well. And by the way, every state that has a voter ID law has a way to get that ID free. Anybody in Indiana who needs a voter ID and doesn't have a driver's license can go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and they can get a free government ID. It doesn't cost anything. It is no big deal. It's all provided free for them because they want everybody to be eligible to vote. A lot of times the Democrats complain about the voter ID because they say, oh, that's such a hardship for minorities. Yeah, you know what? They have to provide that information anyway when they go to get food stamps or other government benefits, and they seem to come up with it then. So, no, it's not a valid excuse. It's really not. And in another way, it's them looking down their nose at their base kind of thinking, oh, those poor people down there. You know, the funny thing is, the people who are making all these laws have no clue what it's like to be poor like that. They just are so detached from reality. Anyway, so that's part of it, too. And of course, you know, they still have some that come in after Election Day, and so they, they have that going on, too. They have to wait until they come in to get those. And then they have this canvas and certification of results. So all the ballots have to be collected, and they have to be certified by the Board of Elections in their state. So this kind of thing can take a while. This is why sometimes you will see tallies change over the next couple weeks, although they should not change much. Because if you notice this middle paragraph here, it says final vote tallies can shift between the election night count and the certified results, though usually not drastically. Sometimes that's due to provisional or military or absentee ballots being added to the count. So they should not change what? drastically. So you're going to see maybe a few votes here and there shift, maybe even 100 or 200, but you really should not see thousands of votes shifting at this point because there shouldn't really be that many that fit into this category. As always, I'm going to put all the articles down below. You'll be able to read the whole article on your own. Well, as you probably know by now, like I said, I was going to do this last night and it didn't pan out. And then I recorded it actually earlier today and for some reason, the recording program shut off on me. So it's been a fun day for me. Anyway, but that also gave me a chance to add in a couple more things that I think are really good. So I'll get to those in a minute, too. You may have seen this. Breaking 911 tweet has breaking. Florida Governor Rick Scott announces lawsuit against Broward, Palm Beach, supervisors of elections. Every Floridian should be concerned there may be rampant fraud, Scott says at press conference. Now, remember, Rick Scott is the Florida governor, but he's also running to be the senator. So that means he's kind of involved on both ends of this. It's an interesting situation. I'm not sure this has ever happened before. So he has announced a lawsuit. He is bringing a lawsuit against them. And then we see here Governor Rick Scott, Palm Beach County, is illegally preventing party officials inside ballot counting room. Have produced 15,000 additional ballots since Tuesday. I believe the number is more than that, actually. Or that might just be for Palm Beach. But the Broward County has gone up, like, tremendously. So that guy, it's amazing. He won. The other guy gave a concession speech. And now the margin of winning keeps narrowing because they keep finding more votes. A teacher in a school that was used for a polling station found a box of ballots. Yeah, that's how sloppy this is. I mean, it is really a very badly run place down there, especially in Broward County and Palm Beach County. His claim was that they were illegally preventing party officials inside the ballot counting room. It's supposed to be where you have some of both parties in there so they can keep an eye on each other. But this is not what was happening. And so this is part of his lawsuit. He's worried about that. 
And essentially, here's what he said. On Thursday night, Governor Scott commanded the state police to immediately investigate the Democrat ballot generation operations. And he said, in Palm Beach County, they have discovered 15,000 new ballots after Election Day. There may be rapid fraud happening in Palm Beach and Broward counties. Palm Beach County is refusing to provide information to the public. Palm Beach County is illegally refusing to allow party representatives into the ballot counting area and forcing people to stand behind a glass wall. So this is not proper procedure. This is not the way it's supposed to be done. There are legal things they have to follow if they're working a poll. There's a lot of rules they have to follow and it has to do with the legalities of it. In this article, it talks about Governor Scott orders state police to seize all Broward and Palm Beach ballots. So supposedly, if they did this, they should have all the ballots now. I don't know that that happened, though. Last I heard when he was talking about it this afternoon, it didn't sound to me like the state police had those ballots. But I don't know. It could be. Anyway, there was a court proceeding this afternoon about this, an emergency one, and the judge ruled for Governor Scott. I believe in that one, he asked the election officials to provide a tally of the votes that were done at the poll that day. And that should have been something where they went to the computer and they pushed a button and it printed it out. They refused to do that. So the judge ruled that, yes, they should be able to provide him with that. That's supposed to be done within 30 minutes after the polls close. And they hadn't done it yet. Hmm. Interesting. Well, this lady right here is kind of at the center of the Broward County stuff. Ah, oh, she's a jewel here. Mm -hmm. Her name is Brenda Snipes. She's the Broward County Supervisor of Elections. I have no idea how this woman is still in that position after everything she's been through. Wow. But she is named in this lawsuit, and she should be. She's supposed to be in charge of it. Oh, my goodness. She really, 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 really needs to be out of that position. In the lawsuit, Scott's campaign names Broward County Supervisor of Elections Brenda Snipes and Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections Susan Butcher in their respective county roles. Now, they are both Democrats. Are you surprised? I doubt it. And, of course, Governor Scott is a Republican. Whoo! His suit complains of a lack of transparency about how many people voted, how many ballots were received, and how ballots were counted, which is supposed to be public information. And that's what the judge today said, that what he was asking for should be public information, and there is no reason why it should not be provided to him immediately. Whether they did provide it immediately or not, I didn't hear. Now, on the other hand, as governor, Scott ordered the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to investigate. Florida's 67 counties are required to report their unofficial returns to state elections officials on Saturday. Now, that means their totals. That's not just the voting that went on on Tuesday. That's everything. That's all the provisional ballots and everything. So all of it should be counted and turned in by Saturday. Well, hey, I don't know. This may upload Saturday morning by the time I'm getting this done. But it should be done soon, right? Hmm, they didn't sound like that was going to happen. Anyway, who is this lady? Who is Brenda Snipes? Well, Republican Governor Jeb Bush, good old Jebby, deep state Jebby. Keep that in mind, deep state Jebby asked Snipes to serve as Supervisor of Elections in Broward County, Florida's second most populous county, nearly 15 years ago. Now, if you recall in a previous video, I told you that it's almost always the Democrat precincts, the ones that they know are going to be blue, that are the last ones to report. And part of the reason for that is so they can fix the election. Uh, but that's why. And so Broward County has about 1.15 million voters, second only to Miami-Dade's at about 1.4 million. By the way, Miami-Dade's came in already, so it's already been put through. Snipes was formally appointed on November 20th, 2003, to replace former county supervisor Miriam Oliphant, who was escorted out of her office and removed from her job. I'm telling you, these people down there are just corrupt. The corruption is abominable. 
CBS Miami reported while Oliphant was in office, uncounted votes were found in a cabinet drawer, and the department went a million dollars over budget. So, lovely people, and that's who she replaced. And then she was re-elected all these times, and uh, you can see her biography here. But let's look at some of the stuff she's been involved with. In August 2016, Broward Elections Office post-election results before polls close. I told you, they have to wait until after the polls are closed before they can post anything. She didn't. She posted the results 30 minutes before the polls closed, which is against the law. Huh. And then in March 2018, judge rules in favor of Broward Elections Office in voter fraud suit. So they had a voter fraud suit, and they accused her office of facilitating voter fraud. In May 2018, destroyed ballots in Wasserman Schultz race. Okay, this is really the biggie at this point that this woman did. In May 2018, the Sun Sentinel reported a judge ruled the Broward County Supervisor of Elections Office violated state and federal laws by destroying ballots from a 2016 congressional race too soon and while the ballots were the subject of a lawsuit against the office. Kind of sounds like Hillary and her emails, doesn't it? The ruling stems from Tim Canova's bid to unseat Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz in the Democratic primary, a race he lost convincingly. In September, Snipes approved the destruction of the ballots, signing a certification that no court cases involving the ballots were pending. Snipes said the action was a mistake during testimony she gave in the case, saying the boxes were mislabeled and there was nothing on my part that was intentional about destroying the contested ballots. Yeah, right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So in other words, Debbie Wasserman Schultz probably was not elected again, but she got the role. In August 2018, George orders Snipes to stop opening mail-in ballots in secret. Do you believe this? The judge ordered her to stop doing that. I mean, how can you do this and still be on the government payroll? And then, of course, in August 2018, vote by mail, late arrivals in the primary election. And she had late delivery on about 5,000 vote by mail ballots. Hmm. I mean, this woman is so dirty. I don't understand why people keep evidently electing her. Stop voting for her, people in Florida. Stop it. Just stop it, okay? Here's another tweet. Breaking voter fraud allegedly found in deep blue Florida County, which we know. Over a hundred provisional ballots were rejected in Miami-Dade County after election officials said people showed up to vote a second time in the same election, according to a local media reporter. <sighs> I mean, serious. This is just crazy. Of course, Marco Rubio had to chime in. The incompetence and the violation of Florida reporting requirements by Broward County Elections Department could impact more than just the outcome. The last thing our already dangerously divided nation needs is an important election half of our people believe was rigged by the other half. That's true. I mean, really. It's like pouring gasoline on the fire. But this is what the Democrats have done for the last several years, and I'm going to show you why. Here we go. Now, if you've never been to the Conservapedia, I highly recommend it over Wikipedia because you know Wikipedia is very liberal. If you want a little different side of the things you find on Wikipedia, come to the Conservapedia. It doesn't have everything that Wikipedia does and doesn't have quite as many articles, but it does have some very good information. Voter fraud. Yes, the article on voter fraud has something very important in it. It has a thing called the Consent Decree. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Consent Decree before, but this is an important part of U.S. history. You need to know about this, especially if you're conservative, because this has set us up and put us in the position we're in today. This little thing right here, the Consent Decree. I have no idea how the Republicans allowed this. The only thing I can think of is that it was arranged by the deep state and maybe deep state Republicans were part of this or they were cornered by liberal judges or something. I don't know, but this was crazy. 
This consent decree was put on the Republicans, I believe, in 1981, where it says here, 1981, during the gubernatorial elections in New Jersey, due to a lawsuit filed against the RNC and Republican-controlled Senate at the time for apparently driving away minorities from the polls, allegedly being against the 1965 Civil Rights Act, which is ironic because, hey, which party was promoting the Civil Rights Act? That was the Republicans. The resulting provision barred the GOP from enforcing voter integrity or it should say enforcing laws preventing voter fraud. The resulting provision called the consent decree was ratified in 1982 and was later modified in 1987 to define ballot security policies as ballot integrity, ballot security, or other efforts to prevent or remedy voter fraud. Essentially, let me sum it up for you. What happened was they sent out a mailing and it went to predominantly African-American neighborhoods or minority neighborhoods. If the mailing was returned to them as in addressee not known, then they wanted to take that person off the voter rolls. So in other words, what they were trying to do is clean up the voter rolls. And of course, the Democrats took that as being against minorities. Oh, you're trying to keep minorities from voting. Well, I don't know for sure if they only did it in that area or if they did just a general one that went out to a lot of people. But it could be that it was just one particular area. I don't know. But it seems to me from what I've been reading that it was totally bogus. I mean, this is so crazy. Now, the other thing that they accused them of was they accused them of putting armed guards outside to intimidate minorities. They were actually poll watchers and they were trying to make sure that nothing funny happened. But of course, they saw that as, well, that's going to intimidate the minorities because, you know, the cops don't get along well with the minorities and everything. And so all of this was in the lawsuit that they put out. So instead of going through with the lawsuit, the Republicans ended up agreeing to this consent decree. And this thing has lasted until December of last year. And it was confirmed in January of this year that it was no longer valid. And now Republicans can challenge all of this. Now, it did have some things in there that we could say, but it really did tie our hands in a lot of ways. I'm going to, of course, put these articles down below, but this is a really good article here by Politichix. This was written in 2013. And it was talking about, since before November's election, many of us have been kicking and hollering about the widespread voter fraud reported, but to no avail. First, we had complaints from voters in at least six states that their intended votes for Mitt Romney on electronic touchscreen voting machines came up as votes for President Barack Obama. Next, we had reports of non-citizens being pressured by unions to register and vote in Nevada. Then we had a number of voters across the country in a bit of a shock when we were told by poll workers on election day they had already voted, even though they hadn't. At the same time, others bragged about voting multiple times on Twitter. Next, we had reports of Obama oddly getting over 99% of the vote in certain precincts on election day. In fact, there were a substantial number of precincts where Mitt Romney got exactly zero votes. This doesn't make any sense. No, and it didn't. I remember that very distinctly. It was like, wait, not one person there voted for him? How impossible is that? Here are some things from True the Vote, some documentation. And I remember this 12 Indiana counties have more registered voters than residents. It was like, really? Are you telling me they have more registered voters than they have people living there? How? How, how, how? And they're not the only place. But these are all documented that you can find here. Again, this is something that you can use as reference. Read through it. It's really good. But basically, they talk about the 1982 consent decree. The Republican Party made an agreement effectively barring the RNC from engaging and assisting in voter fraud prevention unless the RNC obtains the court's approval in advance. They basically made an agreement with the Democratic Party not to ensure voting integrity and not to pursue suspected voting voter fraud. I mean, really, it will make you mad when you read this. It'll put your blood pressure through the roof because it is just incredible. I will have the link to this Judicial View article, and in it, there's a link to the actual court document. So if you want to read that, you can. 
I'm not going to go through it because it's a bunch of legal speak, you know, and it can get kind of boring and hard to read sometimes. These were some of the compromises that were made over time. But look at this. The decree expires December 1st, 2017, and it did. Now, here's the article. Here's the, the thing about it. This is the case number, has all of this background, all of the stuff you want. Again, I will link to that down below. I'm not going to go through it because, phew. This is an update, kind of. This was filed on December 13th, 2010. At this time, when this was argued, the Republicans were hoping that they could get rid of this consent decree. It didn't happen, but there were some compromises, I believe, that came out of that. Well, our president is on top of things. He knows about this, and you know what? He knew that expired. After December 1st, there were certain conditions the RNC had to meet, and so in January, a judge ruled that everything was met, it was all good, and the consent decree was no longer valid. Whew, praise the Lord, because I tell you, that thing was really holding us back, and what it was doing was allowing the Democrats to come up with this system of voter fraud that they've been doing for years now, and this is why all of their elections have been like they are. They're all dirty. We have not had a fair election, at least since that happened, but I think long before that, too. I mean, we couldn't challenge them. If we knew there was voter fraud, we couldn't challenge them. We couldn't purge the list because they wouldn't let us. We couldn't get people off of them that were illegal or non-citizens. They wouldn't allow us to do that. <sighs> So now we can. That's why this election, this midterm election, was the first election since 1982 that we've been able to actually challenge things like this. And so this is happening and we are doing it. I'm seeing a lot of lawsuits going on challenging these. You may have heard of this. The Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity. This was something that our president, who is on top of things, started on May 11, 2017, and it ran until January 3, 2018. He put uh, Mike Pence in charge of it, and he also had Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach served as vice chair and day-to-day -day administrator. So he was the one that was kind of running things, but technically Pence was the chair. But I want you to look at this. On June 28, 2017, Kobach wrote a report in conjunction with the Department of Justice requesting personal voter information from every state. The request was met with significant partisan backlash and a majority of states refused to supply some or all of the information, citing privacy concerns or state laws. Now you'll notice this is from Wikipedia, so of course it makes it look evil what they were doing, these evil Republicans doing this. Well, what they wanted to do was they wanted these voter registration lists so they could compare them to their list of people with green cards. Because people with green cards are not citizens, and non-citizens can't vote. So they wanted to go through the voter registration and take off all these non-citizens. Well, you can imagine the Democrats were not happy with that. And I want to make something clear. There is a difference between an illegal and a non-citizen. There are people here who have green cards, and they are here legally, but they're not citizens. Then we have people who are illegal. They're the ones that came across. They did not get paperwork. They didn't go through the proper channels. They're not citizens either, and they can't vote, but there's still a difference between the illegals and the ones who are legal but non-citizens. So keep that in mind. I hear a lot of people mixing those two up, and really there is a huge difference between them. The one followed the proper channels, and lots of those who have their green card are working towards citizenship. So we do need to respect them that they are working for it and that they have gone the proper legal route. Still, neither category can vote because they are not citizens, and only citizens can vote. So that's what they were trying to do here. Well, of course, the Democrats came back, and get ready for this. More Feinstein wine, yeah. Feinstein wine, again, 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 again. And look at the date of it, May 11th. Well, that was exactly the same day Trump started this. So as soon as Trump started this, he announced it, then what did she do? She sits down and she writes this press release because she's got to tell everybody how unfair this is. 
she knew what they wanted to do. That was the thing. She knew they were going to get rid of people who were not citizens, but who were registered to vote. And they didn't want that, of course, because they count on those votes. That's how they win. Now, whether they're illegal or they're green card non-citizens, it doesn't matter which way they are. Neither are citizens. And she knew that that's where they get a lot of their votes. So here's what she had to say. Ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Senator Dianne Feinstein, today released the following statement in reaction to the creation of a commission to investigate the false claim of widespread voter fraud. False claim, okay? Go back to that article with the politichicks and you'll find out there's not false. Go to truthevote.com. They've got a lot of information about it. There is voter fraud and it is massive. Here's what good old Diane has to say. It's absurd that the White House has created a commission to investigate unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud when states across the country are making it harder and harder for citizens to vote. Yeah, like you have to go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and get an ID? Huh, ooh, that's hard. This is a transparent attempt to justify President Trump's false claim that millions of people voted illegally in the 2016 presidential election. Wouldn't you like to know what the real popular vote was? Because it was not what they were putting out. And did you notice that after Trump was elected, all of a sudden there were a whole lot of votes that still kept coming in. It was like two, three, four weeks afterwards, they still had votes coming in for her. And the popular vote for her just kept going up and up and up. There's simply no evidence of widespread voter fraud in this country, period. It's important that we not lose sight of the context in which this commission has been created. State laws making it harder and harder for Americans to vote by imposing strict ID requirements and reducing early voting are rooted in lies about voter fraud. These laws have had a disproportionate effect on the voting rights of African Americans, Latinos, students, the elderly, and low-income Americans. This is another example of her looking down her nose at people that she thinks are too stupid. And she doesn't mind telling them they're stupid. You're too stupid to go get an ID. That's what she's telling them. If you look at these elite, they have such an arrogance about them. And they think that we are nothing more than mindless sheep, that they can do whatever they want to us, and we have no clue. I had somebody in one of my comments said, you shouldn't be saying all this. If this is true, you shouldn't be giving them any ideas. I got news for you. They're not listening to me. For them, the idea of coming to YouTube and listening to a sheep would be just outrageous. They're not going to sit there and watch my videos because to them it would be like watching a bunch of sheep go meh, meh, meh. And they're not going to do that. I mean, that's really how they look at us. They think we're too stupid to have anything worth listening to. So I'm not worried about them coming here. Plus, everything I'm doing is all open source. Anybody can go and find this stuff. And they already know it. And if you're talking about Q posts, they read Q posts too. So everything is already out there on the table. And they know it. They just think we're too stupid to put all the pieces together. Anyway, she finishes up by saying, Countless Americans have died to secure the right to vote. We must not allow lies about voter fraud to fuel voter suppression efforts across the country. So, that's what she says. She ends it with that nice, righteous indignation that they're so good at. Ugh. So there we go. Another Feinstein wine. Now, although Trump ended that commission, it didn't really end. I tell you, this guy is wily. This is what happened. He took the commission, and instead of having it out there where it's all in the public and everything, he put it under DHS. And once it was under DHS, then it could kind of go underground, under the radar. It's not as obvious to the public that it's been going on. The president may have dissolved the commission, but he turned the investigation into voter fraud over to... The Department of Homeland Security. Check out this. They know. Some of them know. Trump isn't giving up on his quest to remove people from the voter rolls. 
really, why are they so upset about this? Because it's their people that would be removed because they're the only ones that have dead people voting. Ari Berman, an elections expert and investigative reporter, wrote in, guess where? Mother Jones on Thursday. Talk about liberal. Oy. The effort is just going underground. It was not really going underground. It was just being put under DHS so they could manage it and it wouldn't be quite as public as before. That way they could be doing their work without a lot of people looking over their shoulders and whining about it like Diane Feinstein. So read the rest of this article if you want a liberal spin on it. It's very interesting, but they do know it's still going on. Because guess what? Nine people arrested for alleged voter fraud in Hidalgo County. More arrests expected. And you'll see here, this is Attorney General Ken Paxton from Texas. This is from Texas. Announced on Thursday that the election fraud unit of his office arrested nine individuals accused of participating in an organized illegal voting scheme in Edinburgh. And look at what it says here. The AG's office says the arrests follow an ongoing investigation into a coordinated effort by political workers to recruit people who agreed to fraudulently claim residential addresses so they could vote in specific city of Edinburgh municipal races. And I'll let you go ahead and read that. Obviously, this is done in Texas by their own attorney general. But these are going on across the nation, these kinds of sting operations. And personally, I think the Q team allowed this to happen. I think they knew they were going to do this because this is what the Democrats have been doing since the early 1980s. They haven't had anybody that's been able to stop them. I think our military intelligence and our FBI had things going on behind the scenes so that they have the evidence now. They have them. This is going to be prosecuted. Part of that comes from some of the things I've heard Christopher Ray say and also Dan Coates, who is the DNI. I really think the two of them have been working hard to put things in place. But I think right now we're waging a great battle of the voter fraud. It's going to happen for the next couple of months. Get used to it. We're going to see a lot of it. There's going to be court cases. It's going to be massive because no longer do the Republicans have to stand back and be cowed by that consent decree. We can step up. We can actually do some things. We have done things leading up to the election. And we can now take on the DNC on equal footing. And we're going to expose their corruption. They know it. That's why they're so upset. And yes, I'm going to tell you about my Patreon account, not because I'm asking for patrons, but because I'm asking you to go there and see some of the things I'm sharing with you. I can't put every link that I find in a video. There's just not enough time in my day to do that. And there's so much information that I'm finding. So I put them in articles on here. Now, granted, a few of them are going to be like this just for my patrons, but almost all of the rest are going to be like this. How about this lady? Huh? She was a California congresswoman who had to resign because her husband was indicted. Yeah, I mean, it's just more and more. This lady right here, and I'm pretty sure she's a Democrat, she gives us a view of what it was like during the investiture of Justice Kavanaugh. And it's kind of interesting, although she gets a little petty about it. This is the link to that podcast. I mean, I've just got articles every day. I put probably five or six more articles, maybe more. It all depends on what I'm finding. You don't have to have a Patreon account. I am not logged into Patreon. This is what everyone will see when they go there. And if you want to follow my posts, what you can do is get a free Patreon account. They don't cost anything. You don't have to commit to anything. There is no financial commitment at all whatsoever. You just can log in and you can log in with your Facebook if you want to and then click on the follow and it'll let you follow me. That way when I have new posts, when you come up to your Patreon page, it'll show my new posts and everything there. Of course, you can share what you're seeing on Facebook. You can tweet. Uh, if you want to find my Twitter account, it's right here. That's a link to my Twitter account. This is a link to my YouTube channel. And again, if you want to share any of my posts, you can do that easily by clicking here. And if you want to like them, you can do that. Although I think you have to, you can share them without being logged in. But when you try to 
like it or you want to post a comment, you're going to have to log in for that. And again, the accounts are free. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm not begging for patrons. If you want to support me, that would be great. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to still keep giving you the information that I'm giving you because I think it's important to get it out there. Instead of thinking of this as my Patreon page, maybe think of it as a blog because really it's my research blog. This is where I'm putting all the articles that I'm finding. So again, you can just scroll down here. You can read any of these articles. Now there are just a handful that I have set for my patrons, not a lot of them, but some, and you can go through and you can watch these, you can watch videos here, you can listen things. Yeah, by the way, Ruth Bader Ginsburg fractured those ribs, and at her age, that could be a serious thing. I've heard rumors that she was going to retire on January 1st anyway, but I don't know. So we'll see. I think we're headed for a new one. I believe, though, that Trump would probably wait until after the first of the year when the new group comes in. So we have a definite majority in the Senate. I think the liberals' heads are spinning at this one. I mean, really. He's getting three. He may even get a fourth. That would be incredible. So I've got lots of things here for you. Lots of information. Yeah, Jim Acosta, wasn't that great? With the Sessions resignation video, I was trying to get it uploaded, so I posted on here about it, so I can post updates on what I'm doing. If something happens and I can't get a video up, I can post on there and let you know. So please make sure that you check this out. Again, almost all of it is free. There are very, very few posts that are not. So check it out. I've got some good links. They're things that I want you to know about, but I just can't include everything in a video because there's just not enough time in a day. So that's what I've got for you. I want to thank you for stopping by. Please check out the links that I'm putting in here. Every morning I usually put a bunch more on there. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you later.